everyone and welcome to STJ Horse Training and Academy. Here is a new video in which I explain a little bit more about how to use side reins. So this is my Frisian mare Raven. She is five and a half years old here and um, it was really freezing, freezing, freezing cold in December. So while she is doing really well with the cold, I am not. My body gets really stiff when it's that cold. It was, well, in Celsius, about minus four, minus five. That is really cold. And my body gets so stiff that I cannot really move along in the motion of the horse when I'm on them. So then I decide to lunge. If I cannot really properly be on the back of the horse, then I shouldn't be on there. So... Um, here we just start the session with the side reins. So the side reins are a way to help the horse find some more contact and, um, to really work into the contact. So what we see in practice a lot with side reins is that they are very short and the horse is really tucked together. Well, to my experience, that is not really how side reins are supposed to work. What you want with side reins is push the horse from behind into the contact. The horse is the one that should be taking the contact. So I, I haven't really used side reins with her before. I think maybe once or twice, like last year. So they are not really at the right setting just yet so here i just let her walk away then i feel i think right now that they're a little bit too short because i don't want to put her into a working position right away i first want her to stretch into the contact so what i want you to understand from this is that if you put on side reins it's not just Put them into a certain place and that's what the horse needs to deal with no it's really important that you take your time to set up the length of the side reins really well so i think right now i'm making them longer because you couldn't really stretch all the way down and out so that's what we want we really want that reach into the contact you really want that push from that mouth to the bit or if you're not using a bit to whatever you use to make contact with the nose or you can use a side pull as well. I'm working with a bit because I want to use this horse for high level dressage. At the end, I need to go to a double bridle. So at least, at least if the rules are not going to change. So what I want, I push her with my whip into the contact and I want her to really start taking that contact on those side reins. That's what they're meant for. So I don't want her to be behind it. I don't want her to just stay really in front of it. And that's why I have contact on my lunge line. Because that contact on my lunge line invites her to start pushing towards my hand. And then instead of having uh, my hand there, she's going to be pushed into those side reins and I can release my line a little bit. That's where you're working towards to. That is not a point that I will reach in this training session, but that is something you can work towards to when you work with side reins more often. So here you see I maintain contact. She stretches more and I release my line and my pressure a little bit. Okay, so you see that her response to the contact of my, of my lunge line is let's go towards it. And that's what you need in dressage training. You don't want a horse that starts to lean and hang into the contact. No, you don't want a horse that crawls behind the contact. You want a horse that takes the contact. But the, in order to achieve that, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. All right. One, if you're forcing your horse in a frame that is too high for them to keep on moving and working through the body, you will not achieve contact. You will either get a horse that gets behind the contact or you will get a horse that hangs on the contact. All right. What you also see here, like before I was having the line over the ears connected, over the pole connected to the other side. When I work with side reins, I don't do that anymore. So then I just click the lunge line on the inside bit ring. 
Why I do this is because when I get on the back of the horse and I bring, in this case, on the right lead, my right hand to the right, and I take the contact of the rein, she knows, oh, I need to go towards it. And once she gets that, I can start introducing the outside rein and get her pushing towards the full contact on two reins. But you first need them to understand to go towards the contact on one before you're going to add the other one. It just makes your life and your horse's life easier to understand. All right, so my goal in training is to do things on the ground fairly similar to what they can expect in the ridden work. All right, so here she comes up, she goes down, that's all good. As soon as she comes up, I just make contact with the line and ask her like, hey, can you come towards the contact again and come towards that stretch? So here I'm just warming up and I really would like you to see the wave that goes over the back when she lets go and releases. You can see the motion of that back going up and down more and more. And you actually see, and especially if you've seen videos and pictures of her before, that her withers have come up quite a bit. So this horse is still a little bit overbuilt. Her croup is still a little bit higher um, than her shoulders, but that is really, she's growing out really well. She's going to grow out for another two and a half years, so I have time. But you can see that she comes more and more consistent. The side reins are a little bit on the long end, but since I haven't really used them that much, it's great that they're there. She can get used to the fact that they're there and she still understands being invited to come towards the contact. I know she can stretch a little bit deeper than what she's doing here, but that's all right for right now. So this is a young horse. Um, so what I want you to see is that I don't really stay on the same side very long. And I stop and reward quite often. Just because of her concentration, I don't want to bore her brains out doing 20 minutes on one side and then 20 minutes on the other side. Because that's just boring. So I switch, I alternate, but it's also good for the body to just work left and right. It makes them more flexible. And then there's the dog, which is, of course, very distracting, as you can imagine. And then there are sounds there, of course, very interesting. It's still a young horse, right? So although she has very good moments where she's very focused, she also loses it. It's not something to get angry about or have an opinion about. It's just a five and a half year old and she's a little bit of a puppy. So, you know, she gets distracted. That's all right. So we're warmed up a little bit. I'm going to start to trot. And you can still see, I didn't shorten the side reins just yet. I just want her to get used to the fact that they're there. She doesn't have to worry about them. And I still want to invite her to stretch down and out. I'm still warming her up. So I'm not going to start in the working position, which she offers here quite nicely, to be honest. She's getting stronger and she's getting that working position going by herself quite nicely. So. What is the difference between the stretch and the working position? The stretch is with the nose almost on the ground, pretty much. The working position is the nose and bow height, pretty much. And the ears, the pole, is around wither height. So you can see that she's going up and down, up and down. And that's totally okay. We're just warming up. She needs to, it's like, again, it was very cold. So this would be, well... Not even anymore. I'm trying to point out the working position for you guys. Was a Frisian, so her, her neck is already a little bit higher on her body. But let me see if I can point out, like this would be, this is a lovely stretch. And yes, she, when she stretches, she gets on the forehand, but her suspension is working better in the stretch then in the working like here, that would be a little bit working position. And she offers it by herself, but the suspension in her stretch is just a tad little bit better than in the working position, just simply due to a lack of strength. She cannot really get those hind legs underneath while being in a working position as much, and with as much, as much suspension as what she can do in the stretch. So although she might be a little bit on the forehand because her suspension is working better in the stretch, it's actually less damaging on her legs. 
So we're just here working on finding that stretch, finding softness, relaxation, opening up that throat latch a little bit. So I want her nose to be get a little bit more in front of the vertical. And I simply do that by pushing her hind leg, her inside hind leg underneath her body. And that's where it improved. And that's why I stopped. She started opening up that throat latch a little bit. And you need that if you really want her to push into the contact. So I'm st again, apparently I'm still not very happy with how the side reins are, so I'm going to make a little adjustment here. I think I'm making them a tad bit shorter. Like one at your hole. So to know how to I lengthen those, because these are standard side range, which are pretty much always too short unless you have a well short Shetland pony. So I lengthen them with stirrup. Uh, no, with, um, um, gosh, the name. Spur straps, thank you. So, <laughs> so I use spur straps. I actually have two on each side to lengthen those side reins. And then the side reins are on the longest hole. So I think I have shortened them. Oh, yeah, the dog is doing something specific. Very scary, obviously. So I think I've shortened them with one or two holes on, on the spur straps there. So now you can see that she actually took a little bit more contact because the, the reins are a little bit shorter. When I activate, she was trotting, but I don't want to trot there. Now you can see that she's taking a little bit more contact and that's what we want that eventually she can get into the contact on those side reins on two sides. So it's just an introduction on getting into the contact on two reins. And then she slows down and she's processing a little bit and that's totally cool. So I just push her a little bit more forward. Look at those ears, they're so, just so floppy and soft. They're not really pinned back as you can tell. This horse is so happy to work. It's such a fun horse to work with. So here I'm just asking her again to come into the contact, come into the stretch, asking to activate that inside hind leg. So I've been doing that, this with this horse ever since I got her at, well, I got her at three. I started working with her at three and a half ish. So for about two years of training on and off, She's still young. I've been working her from the ground for a full year. And then when she was four and a half, I started riding her consistently about three, four or five times a week, sometimes for 10, 15 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. This year I started competing with her. I'm now qualified for first level with her, but now I'm just slowing it down a little bit again. I noticed that she lacked a little bit of strength going through first level tests. So I'm just working on the basics again. So here you can see I'm pushing her a little bit more, starting to, to invite her to take that contact and she's not familiar with it. So I cannot expect her to do it perfectly right from the beginning, if that makes any sense. So that's not what I'm asking of her to be in that contact and stay there for the entire round. No, what I'm doing here is to invite her to come into the contact and to get familiar with it without stressing out like there she gets a little bit more consistent there that was very nice so i stop and i reward i really had like three or four strides there that she's really more moving into that contact and that's all i'm looking for and this is the thing with training horses that people are so busy with the perfect picture but the perfect picture you can only create if your basics are right so this is working on the basics, getting them familiar on two reins. And you can do that without being on the back of the horse. Actually, you make the life of your horse a whole lot easier to start doing these things from the ground as well. And not just being on their backs, pressing that back down. Okay. So if you're working with a kissing spine horse that's struggling a lot with contact and you can get them to stretch with the line over the pole, or maybe on the inside bit ring. Didi prefers being on the inside bit ring. Totally cool. Whatever works. 
But then this is a really great way to start introducing, taking that contact there. She's opening up the throw latch, very nice. To introduce having that contact on two reins. So the thing is, because I, I rewarded before, right after I had more contact, she starts to find it more quicker now. She just heard something and ran off, which was a pity. That's why I didn't stop. Like here, she's opening up that throw latch again. I'm having a little bit of a discussion with her. That's all right. So I'm trying to find another few strides of that contact. There we go. This is already better. She starts to open up that throw latch. That was very nice. And then I stop and reward. So she's going up and down, up and down. I'm not really having that contact. I don't want to reward her. But if she does something well, I stop right away and I reward because that's what I want her to remember. And this is exactly if you did the rehab strategy course with me or if you've seen the psychological impact of kissing spine on the horse. In this, I discuss horses getting burned out. And one of the reasons why horses are getting burned out is because they've been asked repeatedly to do the same thing. But it's not very clear when they did a good job because the person training is not really clear about what it is that they want and what they're looking because they're looking for a perfect picture usually something that the horse cannot give at that point all right so that's how you burn out a horse so that's why it's so important that if something is improving like just happened previously when I rewarded and now again like I got a little bit more consistent contact for two three strides that's what I'm looking for that's why I stop and reward all right so now she's warmed up I'm going to slowly start introducing a little bit more of a working position again I have worked this horse in side reins two times maybe three in the, in the past and that was a long time ago so one of the things I need to do is slowly start adjusting the side reins for the good height. These are a little bit too long for a working position, but that is fine. She cannot stretch fully all the way down and out. So this is just good to get her a little bit more familiarized with, okay, now there's a stop on how low your head can go. Can I still invite you to come into the contact? When you're restricted on going all the way down. There we go. That's actually quite okay. And no, it's not very consistent. Let's see what she does in a trot. So all of this stuff is a little bit trial and error. Just try and see what happens. If your, if your horse is getting really frustrated, then there's no point in going on. If your horse is trying like Raven is doing here to find that contact and work with what she knows and deal with the circumstances that I'm giving to her here, The most important thing that I don't want with her is that she gets too much behind the contact. And that's why your technique on your lunch line is so important. That when you take contact on that lunch line, that they understand they need to come towards the contact. So I, I think I felt here that they were a little bit too short. Uh, so a little bit too long. So I'm making them a little bit shorter. She's such a sweet girl. Oh, you have to do something, mommy? Okay. I love this horse. So let's try again on this side. Yeah, I made them a little bit shorter here. So they don't have to be tight because if they're tight, she's not really going to learn anything except that I'm forcing something upon her. That's not something that I want to teach my horse. I want to push her from behind into the contact. And then you're slowly going to start shortening, shortening, shortening those reins. 
So now what I want her to do, because you can see she's trying to stretch all the way down and out and her nose is getting a little bit behind the vertical. So what I want her to do is get a little bit longer, pushing her nose out and still stretching that top line while reaching for that contact, but with the nose in front of the vertical, opening up her throat ledge. So her hind end can really come through. This is not something that I can expect of a young horse to do when you ask to do this for the first time with side reins. What I can do is just present her the situation, invite her to come into the contact, and then when she does the right thing, stop and reward. This is already getting a little bit better. So she starts to open up the throat latch there, and that's why I stop and reward. Is it perfect? No. Is it more towards where we want to go? Yes. So I stop and reward. All right. So this is a very important thing that I want you all to learn when you work with this. Like this is a young horse, but this is completely the same with a kissing spine horse. All right. A kissing spine horse needs to reinvent how to use their bodies. And the older they are and the more heavily they've been trained before, the more they need to be reinventing how to move the body. And sometimes their default has already been set up in such a way that they just simply have a very unhealthy way of working and the, using their bodies. All right. So you always have to help them. This is a young horse. So I can program her a little bit better because she's sort of a, a clean canvas, so to say. But with a kissing spine horse, that's not the case. But if you slowly want to start introducing a working position or making the work a little bit heavier because the stretch is good, your pole work is good, and their work has been relatively consistent, then this is a great way to start bringing them up a little bit without the weight of the rider just yet. A kissing spine horse in their development should be treated as a, as you would do a young horse. All right, they, they were muscled upside down. They usually have quite a fair bit bulky under necks, for example, which means that they've been bracing and have really been on the contact. So this is a great way to start doing that. But in order to do this, your foundation needs to be good. So the horse needs to understand to come towards the contact first before you start introducing the side reins. Yeah, the side reins you can use to help your horse settle into the contact. That is something different than understanding to come towards the contact, if that makes any sense, okay? So you first need to teach your horse to come towards the contact, and then you can teach your horse to settle into the contact. <laughs> All right, it's in phases, it's in stages, it's not going into the perfection right from the beginning because then you're not going to get there. And right, now you see that she starts to push opening up that throw latch. That's what we're looking for. That was really good. It was just a little bit short. She's also still chewing a little bit of the candy there. All good. I'm just letting her figure it out a little bit, see if it can get a bit more of that. Because that's what we're looking for, that opening up of that throw latch. And now she's stretching. She's trying to figure it out. I'm activating her a little bit more there. See if we can get her to open up that throw latch there. That would already be a fair bit better. Actually, that could have been a point where I would have stopped, could have stopped and rewarded her, to be honest. These videos are also a reflection for my own work. That's why videoing yourself is so important. See how short I keep the attempts. I think I feel this was enough for today. So I'm, yeah, I'm taking the side reins off. It's just an introduction. It's not like, I'm not going to drill her into those side reins. I warmed her up. I asked her something new and a little bit more difficult. Oh yeah, and then I'm doing the reins back over the pole, especially this one, because she can be a little bit explosive at points and she already broke a bridle when doing that. So, so this is the thing. This is how I build up this training. I warmed her up without a little bit. Then I warmed her up with in the walk and then in the trot, but at full length. Then I made her life a little bit harder, started introducing something more new, bringing her up into the working position. All right, that's a little bit more heavy and a little bit more challenging. And now I'm going to finish it up with something that she already knows 
and it's a little bit more simple for her. I'm going back to finding that stretch without those side range, just back to what she knows, and I'm going to finish up this training. I bet I'm going to do a little bit of kind of work here. Yeah, so jumping to the transition into Kender for young Frisians are, is quite hard. For a Frisian, she has a really good Kender uh, because a lot of Frisians are more built to trot and they're very good in their trot. But her Kender for a Frisian is pretty good, but her, she's not really that strong enough yet. Which is okay. She's already a fair bit stronger compared to six months ago because I started competing her in, not, in training level in June and I literally started cantering her two weeks before and I prayed that she would make it through the whole canter section <laughs> in, in the test. She did, she did very well, but the canter work is still something that we're still developing and growing. So I'm not cantering her a lot. I'm just doing the canter transitions and getting her to jump into the canter because that will make her stronger and loosen her up a little bit more. Now I have a stretch in the canter for a little bit, which he finds very difficult. So it's not as much of a stretch as I would like to see, but for her, means that she's developing because she was really struggling with that. And remember, it's all just a matter of lack of strength. The more you train your horses, the better they're going to become. That's already a little bit better. She misses a, that's good, nice stretch, and she didn't fall out, very good. So you can see how I'm excited about her improving in this because she was really not able to do this before. And on, I have to say that her canter on the right side is a little bit worse than on the left. So I'm going to end this session with something that's a little bit easier for her. But see how she's opening up that throw latch now. She's activating that trot. She's opening up those strides again. So really not super fancy and not too long in a row. Again, this is a very young horse, so you know I'm just cutting it into section, keeping things fairly simple. I am introducing something new, a little bit more challenging, but I'm not going to drill her like a drill instructor because if I do that, I will lose her motivation. And that's for sure something that I don't wanna happen. And I definitely don't want her to turn against me because she is very strong, stronger than she thinks, if you get that against you i'm going to have a very big problem i don't want that i want her to keep the fun i want her to keep the softness and relaxation and the willingness to work very nice see that wave of that back in that walk there very nice see that movement in that body there that's what we're looking for very nice. And yes, it can be more. And yes, it can be this and this and that. But the thing is with training with horses, it's never really about perfection. You're never, like you can aim for it and you want to do the right thing, but you know, you have to do with today's work and that's what it is. And she's improving, so I'm happy. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of canter here. So you can see that she finds this canter a little bit easier. That's why she's also a little bit more, um, how do you say that? Mm, I wouldn't say naughty, but a little bit more, like she's more comfortable on this side. So she's a little bit more challenging me. That's okay. She's in puberty. Good girl, very nice. She's not really having her nose as much out as I would like, but she's attempting to do the stretch, something that she finds a little bit difficult, but it's already more than she could do before. So I'm not going to ask it for a very long period of time. I'm going to reward her for the fact that she's doing this now, and I'm really happy with it. Oh, wrong side of the canner, not, a, not bad. I just take her back, take her to a little bit more soft trot there. And then I'm, I'm going to ask again. 
And now this is how I can tell that she's getting a little bit tired and her muscles are getting a little bit sore because then she cannot really jump into the kenner anymore. Again, kenner work for this horse, but for free, for free, young Frisians especially, it's very difficult. So you don't want to push it too much. Now she's just being a little bit of a twat. And she can do a lead change as well. So I'm just going to check if I can ask that of her. She changed in the front, but not in the back. So I'm going to take her back and ask again. And now she's doing the right one. Like now she didn't really get away with doing the wrong thing because she was a little bit tired. So then instead of taking her back again, I pushed her a little bit forward. She got into trouble. I took her back, asked her again, and then she figured it out. And I had a very nice stretch there, so that's enough. So this is how I build up the training with the side reins with a little introduction to them and how to use them. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me um, on Facebook Messenger or you can send me an email. You can find me on my website, www.stjhorsetraining.nl. Happy to help. Looking forward to see you with the next video. And so does Raven. Kitty pie.